that man and his manga. Reborn as a space mercenary and vocal pilot the strongest ship is one of those titles that, well, as always, pretty much goes through its entire plot in the title. A young man absolutely adores playing his spaceship game and then all of a sudden he wakes up piloting that ship. He knows how to pilot because of course he he's just a guy sitting in his chair one day sitting there playing games and the next thing he knows he knows how to work an entire spaceship because that's how it works and of course he's super good at piloting it and in his cargo he has some very extremely valuable cargo that makes him pretty much rich from the get-go and of course he's overpowered with this overpowered spaceship and quickly gets into a fight and absolutely decimates his opponent so pretty much straight away within the first 20 or so pages we have a character who is pretty much overpowered has an almost unbeatable spaceship has tons of money and has wiped the floor with everybody else because hey he's good at playing games I guess and the series doesn't get any better from there quite frankly now I'm not gonna lie if you want a turn your brain off title that isn't gonna give you any other expectations this is for you if you want a series that is nothing but an overpowered character playing Star Wars and being rich and successful and getting a harem then this is for you if you want anything slightly a little bit more complicated than that or slightly more well written go check out pretty much any other light novel I'm gonna go on record to say that this is actually the worst light novel that I have ever read and I've read a fair few light novels and it's a huge shame because I'm not gonna lie I was really excited to check this one out this is one of those ones where I picked it up and I thought you know it's probably not going to be the best tool in the shade but you know we'll have a good time with it and I was completely wrong this was not a good time at all in fact like I said it was one of the worst times and I'm not even getting to some of the worst parts now one of the things that really set alarm bells off was its treatment of the female characters. Pretty much straight away, after beating all the mercenaries, he comes across a general of this whole army. And of course, she's like, oh, interesting guy. And of course, it's going to end up being the whole harem kind of route. And when he goes onto this planet, uh, he doesn't know the lingo, he doesn't know what to do, he doesn't know how to do anything. And this elf girl, well, she's just like, she's like, oh, you're, you're my underling now, and I'm gonna teach you things because I'm nice and kind of that's it. Not gonna lie, pretty interesting character at the time. And then we get another female character who. He buys. Yeah, um, he just kind of discovers her being dragged off into a back alley, and him being him, he's just like, oh, I'll save you, defeats the enemies, and then discovers she has tons and tons of debt. And then he pretty much pays off all of her debt, and the elf girl goes, well, you know what you're going to have to do, don't you? You know what I mean, nudge nudge, you know what I mean? You're gonna have to pretty much have sex with this guy now because he basically owns you. And at that point I pretty much mentally checked out because having characters that literally only exist for something like that, yeah. It's one of those ones where I've read better written plot in a hentai and yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, if you want to write that, just go out and just say, I want to write a hentai or etchy series. But no, this masquerades as everything else because, of course, that girl absolutely falls in love with him because he saved her by slave trades or something. It's kind of uncomfortable. 
But it gets better. It gets better because this elf girl senpai, this elf girl who has taken this main character under her wing, well, she finds herself in debt. And he buys her too. Yeah, within hundred pages of this title we have two female protagonists that he has essentially bought with all of his amazing money that he's got for basically doing nothing and yeah and it, yeah it's kind of like I not gonna lie I like titles like Monster Girl Doctor I like titles like Interspecies Reviewers or do you love your mom and her two hit multi-target attacks? As etchy titles go, they're pretty fine. But this kind of felt that it came out of nowhere. And it kind of felt that it was a rush job just to get all of these characters on this spaceship and into his bait. There was no development between these characters. What interesting things happened with this senpai elf character just disappeared because the author couldn't be bothered and felt oh we'll go for some very quick titillation rather than developing any kind of character and of course don't worry don't worry we have all of that interesting character development for the main character actually no we didn't we didn't really have any character development for the main character this is one of if not the worst title i have read in a light novel book naked in another world had more going for it than this does it is an insult that this title was allowed to be released physically when other titles are struggling to even get prints. Why can't we have more reprints of Classroom of the Elite compared to having this absolute tripe? Now, I'm not gonna lie, there is a market for this type of title. And I'm not gonna lie, a few years ago, if I hadn't read dozens of other light novels, I might have enjoyed this one a little bit more. I'm not gonna lie, it was a very quick read. I managed to get through it in a few hours because I just wanted it to end. And that's about it. I can't really see much more about this title because there's literally nothing to it. It's one of the titles where you just read it and it's just kind of like, oh, it goes for, it goes to this planet and you know captures a wife or buys a wife or whatever, by and then goes to another one and takes out these and that's about it. The volume ends with him just going, oh, we'll go to another star system, and I'm just kind of I'm looking at another cover and it's like. Yeah, Volume 2 has a different girl on the cover who's not in Volume 1. How is he going to buy her? Uh, I have heard rumours about Volume 2 or 3 where another character who is a very, very young girl gets involved on the ship and it's kind of very uncomfortable because she's madly in love with him and he's kind of like, uh, no, I'm not into that. And I'm just kind of like, hmm, how long until he is into that? Because I'm not going to lie, with this title, I kind of feel that's where it's going. And it's kind of uncomfortable. I know harem titles are really popular. And I know this whole isekai genre of being reborn and being something is also popular. But by God, at least give the guy some goals. I mean, his goal is to retire and live on a planet peacefully somewhere. I mean, I'm not going to lie, I probably would want to do the same rather than being shot at, but considering you have the most powerful spaceship in the world, it doesn't really matter because you're probably not going to be in much trouble anyway with being overpowered and all. And it's really sad because this is a one that has a lot of potential. I, one of the things I mentioned is that it just wasn't anything that I expected and someone was like, well, it's not a space opera. And I'm just like, yeah, it's not. But even if he's building up this world, create a spaceship or whatever, give him some goals. I mean, at the end of the day, have a whole plot arc where he has to see if this girl who's being kidnapped or what have you, or have this elf senpai girl who has mentored him fall on hard times and then he's just like, oh, well, we'll do a whole arc about it. But don't just rush everything. Don't just give him two girls that you've essentially just bought and then kind of 
gone from go to nothing because I genuinely don't think this series can go anywhere else apart from to another planet and buy another girl because that's how low I kind of feel with this. A lot of titles they build up from something small and then have you get a little bit further. The elf girl could have been his mentor for the first few arcs and then fell for him or what have you another excuse to get her on the ship or they decided to combine things and she's a bit reluctant because oh she's their mentor and yeah having the pep talk was like oh well you know you're gonna have to be a, yeah you know you're gonna have to be in bed with him and then the next 10 pages later it's like oh well, i'm gonna have to get in bed with him as well it's like no this is just this is probably the worst light novel i've ever read and i'm really sorry for the people who because i don't like do negative reviews but I sometimes I need to warn people there's plenty of other great titles out there if you want a space opera check out Banner or Crest of the Stars if you want a decent isekai check out anything else if you want a harem series there's dozens Aria Ferretta a series I'm not even a fan of kicks this up and down the aisle Data Live High School DxD there's plenty like I said, Monster Girl Doctor or Interspecies Reviews, there's plenty of great etchy titles that actually do push the envelope a bit rather than just writing something and just be like, oh well they fall in love with him because he bought him. And it's just it's just insulting that I feel like I spent my time reading this. It is it was so bad. But that is what I feel about it. Now let me know in the comments what you thought of this series and let me know what the worst light novel is that you have ever read. And if you do like light novels, make sure you're subscribed and check out some of the other things that are going to be coming on the screen. See you over there. Goodbye. <laughs>